Hi everyone, welcome to Whimsical Wednesday here on Dixie Bell's main Facebook page. It is Wednesday night, seven o'clock central time. I'm coming to you live from San Antonio, Texas. My name is Tracy. My business name is Tracy's Fancy and I'm a brand ambassador for Dixie Bell Paint Company. Um, and I go live every single Wednesday night at seven o'clock central time right here on this page, sharing with you whatever is going on in my shop that week. So this week we are doing, hey, sweet Leah. Hi, Mwah. good to see you, honey. <laughs> Leah Noel with two L's. <laughs> uh, Leah is another brand ambassador for Dixie Bell Paint as well. I love when the other brand ambassadors have just a second to pop on and say hello. Hi, Sherry. How are you? And hello, Libby. Thanks, you all, for being here and joining me tonight. Um, tonight in my shop, we are working on a, a pair of custom Bombay stands. And hi, Bridget. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Thank you all, Valerie, for being here. Uh, if y'all will hit that share button, let others know that we're live. We're doing some basic and simple paint tonight with a color that I've never ever used. Um, I have a client, she's local, and she purchased these two Bombay set, uh, Bombay nightstands that have, they're very good size, they're big big and chunky, um, and she wants them painted blue. And she gave me a pillow shame to match them too, and guess what color matched? Dusty blue, and guess what? I've never ever painted with dusty blue. Can you believe that? Hi, Carol. Hi, Diane. Thanks you guys for telling us where you're from. We love it here at Dixie Bell. If you will say hello for one thing. Hi, Debbie. And then let us know, know where you're tuning in from. Um, Woohoo, Lynn. That's right. We all love a good Bombay chest. Hi, Julie. Um, let us know where you're tuning in from. Hey, Nina. And uh, also, if you have any questions, if you're new to Dixie Bell, just let us know. We've got a lot of people that I'm saying hello to right now. They're regulars. They watch my lives. They watch the other brand ambassadors' lives. They watch retailers' lives. Um, and they are, a lot of them are pro painters as well and can help you out. So Dixie Bell also right now is saying hello. They are here behind the scenes as well. Thank you for being here. And they will help me in the comments and answer any questions that I might not see come up. Um, Sherry, you did a, a friend desk and dusty blue it's a great french color and i don't know why uh i haven't used it before but i have two jars of it there this is it right here this is dusty blue this is what it looks like it's a beautiful color i would i would call it a good french blue it's not a baby blue it's a good french style blue and it's just not in my normal color palette and another color that i think i may use as well is um Stormy Seas, and I don't use Stormy Seas very often either. Now, I have used it multiple times, but not that often. Um, so I think that I may just do one color and then do some deeper shading with this color here. And then I, in the end, I'm probably gonna use Besting Wax and Brown. Um, maybe black, but probably brown. Y'all know black, Besting Wax Black is my go-to. Um, so these are probably the two colors that I'll be using, but I'm gonna be coating this entire thing in this color right here, and we're gonna do that together. So, um, Oh my goodness, this jar was open. <laughs> so let me tell you what I've already done. Um, if you're new to Dixie Bell, Dixie Bell is a chalk mineral paint company. Um, this is their chalk mineral paint right here. It is a fabulous product that is super easy to use, has great coverage. Um, you'll see that in just a minute. Uh, with one coat, great one coat coverage, great adhesion, um, and they are a great one-stop shop company as well. They, they carry every product that you can possibly imagine that you would need for your paint projects. So, super easy to use. You don't have to sand your, your furniture. You uh, Most of the time you don't. You uh, very, very rarely sand. You don't even always have to prime. However, I did prime these. This is the set right here. You can see that. Like, and I'm glad I primed it. I've already washed both of them in White Lightning, which is their cleaner product that they have that works wonders. I give it a shower. I sprayed them. I've done it on live video with you guys. I sprayed the whole thing down, which you really need to because these pieces have a lot of carvings, like this right here. A lot of deep carvings for dust and dirt to get settled in, all of this right here. So when you give it a good shower with your White Lightning, it just lets it run off. And then I follow that with straight water because you don't want to leave your White Lightning on your piece because it'll it, it can... Um, um, cause adhesion problems for you. Stormy Seas is a great color. It really, really is. Um, but I don't paint with a lot of blue. I paint with a lot of the gulf, like the blue greens and the teals and the aquas, but not a lot of just straight up blues. Um, and this of course is the gray that pulls blue or it is a blue gray. So it's just not one I use a whole lot. 
and then this one not at all so um <clears throat> i did open the jar already the sides are painted this side and that side and the top is painted we're going to paint the front together here so i cleaned it in white lightning then i rinsed it with regular water and i dried it really well then i coated it in dixie bell boss this is a uh, water-based primer it is um, a primer that blocks odors and stains and stops um well, what does it say? Stops bleed through. Blocks odor stains and stops bleed through. B-O-S-S. -S. Uh, this had bleed through. It came through even when I was priming just a little bit. So I'm really, really glad even though I was going with blues because you still can have bleed through darker colors as well. Now, I mean, obviously you're not going to have bleed through through like aubergine or, or caviar. Um, but you can still have uh, grays, lighter grays, and some uh, blue, mid-tone blues. Any of your mid-tone colors, you can still see bleed through. So, um Bobby, I know, but you know what, hun? Bo uh, Bobby says she can't believe I painted the beautiful wood. It actually is a really pretty wood. It is. Uh, it's it's a pretty color, to be really honest. And they were in great shape, but you know what? It just doesn't go with my client's room at all. And um, a lot of people aren't using just straight up wood tones right now. So we paint them, and they're going to be beautiful. Thank you for saying that. Um, not to have the correct name, Bunker Hill. It was driving me nuts. Bunker Hill. I don't know what I missed what you said Carol I missed what you said okay so let me tell you what I did I pounced on as you can see I like to pounce my primer I don't always do it but when I'm going for kind of an old world look I don't mind at all doing a pouncing action so I had primer and I just I actually brush it on and then I go back with my brush and I just kind of pounce it like this and you get really good coverage this is one coat of boss I've let it dry for several hours and I'm ready to move on with my paint so here we go. This is my dusty blue. I've barely used any out of here at all. And right now I'm using, I don't know what the stock is like on the Dixie Bell brushes right now, but if you don't have a Dixie Bell brush, watch the stock. Continue to visit the website. Speaking of, you can find a local retailer near you by going to DixieBellPaint.com and look into the search bar and type in, uh, there's a search, find a retailer. Put your zip code in and it'll tell you a retailer around you. And then, um, uh, but I also put a link above this video that has my affiliate link. And if you order through that link, anything that you see here that might inspire you or anything, if you just want to go shopping or if you're in the mood to shop, um, then I get a little kickback from that as a thank you from Dixie Bell for um, helping promote their products. So this right here is the oval medium, oval medium. Um, it's been used a thousand and one times. It's uh, I'm not, my stock is low because they've been out of brushes, not because they're made in China. Nope, they are handmade right here in the United States, but uh, by a man and uh, a couple of his family members, to be honest. I think he's in Tennessee. Is that right, Dixie Bell? Um, so anyway, I think um, I think he got a little back ordered. And so they've uh, putting some onto the website, continue to check it. I actually did just get five new brushes. I was able to order five, uh, one of each of my favorites. So this is oval medium. I love oval, oval mediums especially when I'm working in carving carved areas like this. So I'm going to put just a little bit of this gorgeous dusty blue right here. Um, thank you, Dixie Bell, for putting my affiliate link up there. They are the best brushes ever. Let, um, so this is pouncing, you guys. This is how I pounced. Uh, pouncing is great when you're working on uh, areas. Like if you do just like this, you can't get all in there. If you pounce, you get in all of the nooks and crannies. Um, let me tell you a little bit about these brushes. The reason they are so wonderful is because they are, first of all, they're synthetic fibers. Um, it's not a natural bristle brush, natural brush, natural bristle brush. It's not a natural bristle brush. Uh, do I need to sand the project if it's stained before I paint it? Cindy, you do not. So this is stained. That wood that you can see that little piece of right there, that's stained. No, you do not need to sand it. That even has a factory coat on it. So let me show you what I'm going to do here, guys. I'm just going to get, you do not need to do this. Um, there's nothing perfect about this. You can do this quick and easy. This is my base coat. One coat coverage here, guys. You see this? Uh, so she's asking if she needs to sand. No, you don't. Now, if you think that it's a stain that's going to bleed through your paint, I would definitely prime it. It's got knots in it. Pine knots continue to seep for like a lifetime. Uh, so you definitely want to, in, unless you seal them, if they're left natural, they will continue to see. So you definitely need to seal that. Mahoganies, any of the woods that have, uh, you know, really good, strong wood tannins, through, they'll bleed through like a purpley pink will come through, um, come through your paint. Ch the reason this happened, y'all, chalk paint, 
uh, chalk mineral paint is a natural. It's a natural product. It's uh, very porous and wood has natural wood tannins in it. And the chalk paint is just open. It's, it's wide open. It, it, uh, and it allows the wood, when you put your top coat on at the end, it allow, for some reason, this chemical reaction, like something about, something about osmosis, uh, takes place and the wood tannins actually are pulled through the porous chalk paint. There's nothing to block them. They get pulled through the chalk paint and right to the surface of your product, project. A lot of times you will not see that bleed through until you put your top coat on and that's really disheartening. Um, I do a lot, this here is not gonna be a whimsical piece, but I do a lot of whimsical painting where I do a lot of hand painted stripes and checks and harlequin that I, I don't even use stick. I do them by hand, like cross-eyed, you know, lots and lots and lots of them. So I want to always be sure that I'm not gonna have bleed through at the very end because after I've spent all those hours doing all that and going cross-eyed and sacrificing my vision, I really don't wanna have that happen. I know, Alicia, isn't it beautiful? It's beautiful, isn't it? I love it. So you can um, use water when you paint with Dixie Bell paint, uh, the chalk mineral paint. Um, we have really great Mr. Bottles, but I don't know if those are back in stock either. They've been um, out of stock as well. So I have this, this was a gift. It looks like Jack Daniels bottle, but it says straight water. Uh, it was a gift from uh, a friend of mine on, that we met online, but now we've actually met in person. She lives in Florida. Her name is Sue and she sent this bottle to me. So it, you hear this, I've already painted. It's no big deal. You just spray it and run it back over. If you need to reactivate it, let's say it was an area that you had a drip or that was starting to dry or your drag marks or you didn't think it looked smooth enough. Or for those of y'all that are wigged out about brush marks, just use your water. It just takes it right out just smooth it real light. Be very, very light with your hand and you will get a gorgeous, gorgeous finish. Um, uh, let's see, uh, Lynn. Lynn is Lynn is from New Zealand, you guys, and it's her winter there, and she is just dying. Like she's got the beach there, and she can go walk, but it's freezing. And we're all talking about swimming pools and the beach. And uh, yesterday in my health and wellness group, we were I did five recipes made with watermelons, and she was like, I, she can't even get watermelon over there right now because it's winter time. Poor Lynn. But Lynn, you are doing some gorgeous work with your Dixie Bell paint, girl. I saw that buffet that you did. It was gorgeous. Pounce, pounce, pounce. I did the sides so quickly. So one thing you can do, what if you watch this, you can, thank you, thank you, thank you, Wendy. You can just spray right here. Spray this and then paint, or you can do this. Spray your brush and then paint. Or you can use a dry brush put it on, and then spray your paint. It's up to you. It's a personal preference. It's not systematic. Everyone does it differently. Every single painter that you watch, not one of us does it the same. Everybody's got their own system and the own way they do it. All of us, you know, and you too at home. That's what we want. We want to share our ways so that you can, at home, can find your way and what works best for you so that it becomes very calming and relaxing for you so that when you get out in your garage or your shop or if you're lucky enough to have a she shed, um, if you get out in those areas that you can just turn your music on and not have this project be stressful, but uh, calming. And I know I don't look real calm right now because I'm yapping away with you guys and I'm painting in a hurry because I always want to cover as much as I possibly can. But if y'all weren't out here, I'm, I'm not slow. I'm a definitely a fast painter, but I just lose myself in it. I, I really do. And I just made a post. If you will please follow me on, like and follow my page. Tracy's Fancy. I put my link up at the top. If you will go to my Facebook page, like and follow my page. I talk a lot about lifestyle on my page as well. And painting is a huge part of my lifestyle, as it is, I'm sure a lot of y'all's, or else we wouldn't all be here together hanging out. But painting to me is a way to sort of leave the world behind. Do y'all agree with me? I mean, it is, this is my safe zone, and I don't want anyone getting in my safe zone. Um, I have a large dining room table in Cherry. Can I paint it with this technique? Absolutely, but Cherry Wood, you absolutely need to seal it. You, uh, you, need, to, you need to prime it. So yes, just like this, just like this. 
use your, get yourself some Boss. We shared the link. Make sure you order Boss in white. Order Boss white. Uh, get yourself a good brush and then choose what color you want. And if the Mr. Bottles aren't available, just get yourself a spray bottle and uh, whatever paint color you want. And then you will need, I mean, you don't have to have a top coat. Dixie Belle paint does not have to be top coated. But, now see how quick we did this? So fast, right? So fast and so simple. No one has to be afraid of this technique. It's just so easy. Uh, anyway, Dixie Belle paint cures, um, within 30 days, you don't have to put a top coat on it. If you actually have, I don't ever have 30 days. If you have 30 days to let it sit somewhere where it can be treated gently, you don't have to put a top coat on it. However, it's going to dry with a very sort of a, you know, like a, a chalky feel to it because that's what it is. It's a chalk mineral paint. It doesn't mean it actually has chalk in it, but it's called chalk mineral paint. It's called chalk paint because of the way it feels. Um, so it's gonna dry with that feeling. So you're gonna need to get a top coat as well. And what I would recommend for the person who uh, asked about her cherry dining room set, um, let me move the camera. Well, I guess I can do this over here. Uh, the person that asked about her dining room set, I would use Gator Hide. I have painted my table, my dining room table and my breakfast table. Um, uh, so I like to refer to my blog a lot. So I have a blog, I write it every single week and uh, I'm not trying to get you to go over there right now, but I do have a blog and I did my dining room table and I give you all of the steps and what products I used. Um, and Gator Hide would be my go-to. It's called Gator Hide. If you're new to Dixie Belle, it is their uh, hardiest top coat. And I think it's perfect for um, a painted tabletop. We don't even use coasters on mine. And, uh, uh, and it's the family, not the breakfast table, but it's our big table that we get together as a family um, and we use at the holidays. And I painted it before last Christmas and it, it held up beautifully. And my daughter is currently using it every single day um, because she's virtually learning. She's in the eighth grade and that's her desk. So I'm sure you can understand that a 13 year old doesn't have a lot of respect for a tabletop and it, she's, it's held up beautifully. Um, I have a bedroom set that I'm going to paint. It's a darker stain, not cherry or mahogany. Uh, I still would. Should I use Boss to be? I would. If, if you just don't, you can do a little tester spot. What you do to test, clean it, wipe that off. Just to, like around on a back corner um, or especially where carvings are. I would go and do a tester spot. So clean it, put some paint on, brush a little bit of paint on, let it dry, and then put a top coat on it and see what happens. Um, but don't just test one spot. Test like on a flat spot and then go test, if you've got a carved area, be sure and test a carved area. Um, because it seems to happen around that area a lot too. So I would use it just to be safe. Um, do I ever paint the walls with this paint? Jamie, um, thank you, Ruth. Hi, Ruth. Um, I, okay, that, no, I've never put it in a roller and rolled it on the wall but I have painted, hi Mary Jo, many, many, many walls with Dixie Belle paint. So first of all, I'm a muralist, so I do art on walls. Um, so I've painted many walls and you can find those on my blog too at uh, tracysfancy.com, tracysfancy.com. Uh, just go to the search bar on my blog and type in um, walls, walls. Um, and any blog that I have, any wall that I've ever painted with Dixie Belle paint will come up. I've done it where you put it on spray and then you spray it with water and it drips down. You've maybe seen that wall on Pinterest that rain, I call it my water wash wall or my rain wall. Um, that's mine. I've done many rooms in that finish and it's all been with Dixie Belle paint. Um, so you can, you absolutely can. Um, and they don't sell it on their website in the gallons, but they will sell it. You just have to call them, I think. I'm pretty sure, right Dixie Belle? They have to like call and ask for it. Uh, what would you use as a primer for veneer? Uh, Boss, I would still use Boss for sure. Uh, I didn't get a notification. You didn't, Michelle. I blocked you, Michelle. <laughs> I'm kidding. Not at all. Beautiful color, isn't it? Jan from Greece. Hi, Jan. Hi there. Um, so, okay, so Dixie Ball is saying yes, I am right. So you can get gallons from them, but you just have to call them. Just call them from their contact number. Okay, so the only thing I didn't do on here with y'all, because I was gabbing, was I did not open my drawer. So always open your drawers. And I just take my brush and I run this paint right across the top here, which I've already put, 
it's got primer up there too. So just do just like that. Get over here on the side. I just kind of hit it with the paint. The reason I do it real lightly like this is I don't want it to be thick. I don't want there to be a big, thick buildup. I don't want it to cause problems for closing the drawers. So very, 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 very light. And then I just kind of push that close and I don't close it all the way. Open this one back up. So you see the coverage? Guys, that was one coat. Pretty amazing, right? Now I will go back and do some shading probably uh, with Stormy Seas, but I wanna let this dry all the way before I jump in and start doing any shading. You cannot shade, guys. You need to have a base coat. If you're gonna shade, you need to have your base coat and you need to let a base coat dry. And then you can come back in with more dusty blue and blend it with Stormy Seas um, on top of it. But you at least need to have a base coat. If I start blending, trying to blend Stormy Seas over this wet, it's gonna blend together and it's gonna pull back and then you're gonna see my Boss Primer underneath it. So always get a base coat on and let it, um, and let it dry. And then you can start your blending or shading, shading process on top of that. Okay, so now my drawers are open and get these just hit a little bit like so. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you what I would do next. So after this dries, um, actually, I need to get, I get so busy talking to you guys that I need to check my drips. You always go back and check your drips. Always, always, especially if you've got carvings, you wanna go back and make sure you don't have any drips, okay? Just go back. Go back and pick them up, just like I'm doing here. I'm just going back around this carving like so. It's already almost dry. Just kind of spreading it out like that. See how rough you can be with it? You don't have to be all particular and, and nervous. If you have a bedroom set, just get some paint and start putting it on. It's so easy, just like that. Okay, so the next thing that I would do, I meant to put an apron on, sorry. The next thing I would do after this dries, I would use my fin this finishing sponge. So this looks like a loofah, looks like a loofah. See that? They have these on the website. This dries with sort of a chalky fill. So uh, you can leave it that way if that's what you like. Um, so I would take this, once this is completely dry, before I start working on my little blending process, I would take this and rub this down. Not like super hard, but just like that. Can y'all hear that? I don't know if you can hear it. Just like your loofah in your skin. It feels just like that. So you just do that, just real, just lightly over the top of it. And what that does is it just sort of breaks that surface back open. So it dries sort of with a, a height to it, like a you can feel it almost. And if you take this and just do like that over the top of it, real quick, just over the top. You don't have to rub it, you just go like this like that, one side to the other, go to the next drawer, one side to the other, just like that. Um, then you feel like do one and not the other, and the one that you've done still feels kind of rough, and the one that you, I'm sorry, the one you've done feels smooth like butter, and the one that you haven't done still has that chalky feel to it. So I would do that over the front, and then I would start with my um, two colors again and blending them, okay? So let's see, it is only 725. I think I'm gonna break open my boss and I'm gonna turn you guys around to this side over here and let's put a little bit of boss on this one. Just like so, let's see, what brush do I wanna use? I think I'll use this one. All right. Um, I wanted to use the patina spray. I've never used it before. I've already painted my piece and like the finish. Um, and I want to add patina. Do I just put the paint where I want the patina? How do you keep the drip off the rest of your piece? Okay, so that's a really, really good question. Um, you really can't keep the running drips off. Uh, you're gonna have to get a little bit artistic with your brush. Um, but if you can lay your piece down, that really helps. Um, and also be sure that wherever, you, yes, you need to put, it's only going to patina where that metallic paint is. That's the only part that's gonna patina, okay? So um, you may spray it and then if it runs down, I, most of my pieces I like the drips, but if you don't, just keep a rag with you near you just like this. And as it starts to run, just kind of hit it like this. Just catch them, 
underneath, okay? But also if you can lay your piece down and build up your paint by, by doing like this, like if you want it to rest over here, don't just go like that because it's gonna patina and brush marks. It's gonna look like brush marks. If you want it to look natural the way I do it, hi Treva, um, is I, I pounce it on. I kind of pile it up, pounce it on like that and then spray it and then just catch your drips. Just pat them out like that. It'll, it only drips for a second. It doesn't drip like it doesn't just keep dripping. Hi, Brittany. Um, okay, so actually, I think I'm gonna use, what brush do I wanna use? All right, this is my boss. I've had it upside down. I shook it up really well, and then I've had it sitting like this. Um, boss, you really should stir when you open it because all of the additives sometimes will settle in the bottom. And um, in order for it to do its job to be a blocker and uh, the adhesive qualities that it has, they're often settled into, into the bottom of the jar. So you need to uh, be sure you stir it. But what I did was I shook it up an hour or so ago and then I had it sitting like this and it allows those additives to kind of run back in to the top and then I shake it again. All right, so let me show you how I pounce my boss on and here we go. So here's my boss. This is boss white, just like this. So I go to put it on and I just run it straight across like this. And then I go behind and I break it up and just sort of pounce it out like this. You do not have to do this. So just like I said, you know, there's three, four or five different ways to spray and add water to your paint. Same thing with how you paint. So I just don't want to run it straight on. I don't want to add water to my prime. I don't want to add water to it. Some people do. I don't like to. Um, so I just brush it on like this, but I don't want to leave those brush strokes that it's giving me right there. So I go back and I break them up. Have any of you done like epoxy resin? Did y'all watch Matt and I do the epoxy resin countertops and the nightstands last week? Um, it's, it's what you do there too. You want to chop up that you want to chop up your surface. It just gives a nice, smooth surface for me to put my paint on. It's just a preference. It's nothing that you have to do at all. But you see what the, what great coverage it is, y'all, for just one coat? That's one coat of primer. So obviously, I don't need new primer. So for those of you that have the nightstands or the dining table that we're talking, y'all had the mahogany or the cherry. Um, uh, this is what you would prime with right here. Boss White. Boss White's what I'm gonna recommend for those, okay? Now, the good thing about these synthetic brushes, y'all, is, see this brush right here? I've used this brush uh, literally thousands of times. Do you see that it's still an oval? It's not all like, like that. You know how brush bristles go like, wah, and they just get all over the place? They bounce back, they spring right back. You just wash them really well, and they spring back. They're a wine color. That's the color. That's the actual color of the bristles. Evelyn, are you asking me where I'm where I am, or are you talking to someone else? I'm in San Antonio, Texas. I'm in San Antonio, Texas. I do not have a shop. I work out of my house and online only. Um, and I'm in San Antonio. Dixie Bell. Is, I don't know if maybe you were asking, but Dixie Bell. Dixie Bell is home based in Florida. That's where uh, the paint is actually manufactured. That's their, that's their home base, but they have retailers um, all around the world. Hello, Miss Carrie. So you can, I'm already starting to see some areas where I've got a little bit of bleed through coming in here. I don't know, and sometimes you also think it's bleed through and it's dirt. So even though I've done, I've cleaned this piece really well today with white lightning, sometimes what you see come through is actually some uh, dust that's being like reactivated to its dirt self. <laughs> so I never really know, ex I don't really know exactly what that is right there, but what I do know is that Dixie Bell uh, Boss is gonna stop that from coming through on my paint. So that's that. So see these smooth drawers up here? I do the same thing. I just brush across them like this. See how it's kind of streaky like that? See that? And then I just follow and I just chop it up. And then it dries more of like a spray painted look. It has more of a, I feel like it's a little bit more durable this way. I don't, I don't know why. I don't know that if that's legit. I don't know if that's true, but that's how I feel. That's how I feel about it. 
same thing right here. So let me tell y'all about these pieces. So I think I mentioned, if you already follow me on my page at Tracy's Fancy, um, I mentioned that these were gonna have an Asian twist to them. Um, let's see here, what's Tracy saying? Uh, Boss contains odor eliminating stain blocking technology for itself. Creamy formula, God's not smooth. Oh my goodness, Tracy's just like giving you the lowdown with all her professional words. Tracy, thank you. <laughs> I can't see what the rest of that's saying. Yay, very well. She put that so eloquently, right? Uh, I'm gonna do one coat. You can do two coats. Uh, you sometimes will need to do two coats. So if you do one coat and you notice that you still see bleed through, then you need to put down another coat. Or let's say you got a stinky piece. Let's say you inherited a piece from your grandpa and he was a smoker, but you love the piece. It's got a gorgeous look. It's got sentimental meaning, but it stinks bad. So uh, Boss will block that odor. And you may do one coat. Hey guys, you may do one coat and still be able to smell the odor a little bit. So let it dry and then just follow it with a second coat. And usually by two coats, you've solved all of your problems. This piece though, these pieces I'm only doing, um, I'm only doing one coat. They really did, they really, I just wasn't sure they really needed it. I'm just trying to be, trying to be safe. Better safe than sorry. So what I was gonna tell you about the Asian flair is I can't wait to show you this. So this couple travels all over the world, all over the world, and they live here in San Antonio, and she asked me to do these. They're, they just bought a new home, or they're building a new home, and um, they've got this gorgeous room planned, and their bedroom, not their house, they're not decorating in the whole house, but their bedroom's gonna have an Asian flair because it has sentimental, I guess her husband um, is, uh, is part Asian, and, then it, and they, I think they maybe had their wedding, where he's from, I don't even know where that is. Anyway, I thought it was pretty cool. So look what I, she wants me to do on these. Um, on the bottom, like on one nightstand, on, on one side of the bed, like over here on this side, I'm gonna hand paint an image right here on the front. And on the other nightstand, on that side, on the far side, on the same curved edge, I'm gonna hand paint an image. Um, so these are the two images. And I don't know, this is, one is a phoenix. Does it go this way? Like that and then is this just a dragon is that what they call that does who knows i don't know what the history is behind these but like a phoenix and a dragon so very kind of uh these are going to be very elegant they're going to be two tones of the blue a little bit shading um highlighted in golds and then i'm going to have this hand painted artwork a phoenix on one side and a dragon on the other i know aren't these cool so these are the printed image that she gave me. This is what I'll use as my template to uh, get them drawn out and just sort of a simple sketch style. You know, I was like, sure, I'll do that. <laughs> sure, I know, kind of cool, right? Just a little touch of it in the bottom corner of each piece and that's it. Just so that it's a reminder for them. It's like a kind of an intimate reminder. Isn't that, that's what I love about custom work. And that is what I love about painting furniture because, um, People, we live with our furniture. Who says it has to be boring? And our, our furniture should, your furniture, the, the things that you choose to put in your home should represent you. You know, I am a firm believer in that. And um, you don't have to always just have wood furniture or black furniture or gray furniture. You can put color in it or put a little bit of um, personality in it. It should reflect you and who you are. So I say that all the time. And then she asked me to do that, and I just love it. I love when, when my clients, you know, she thought of that all on her own. It wasn't like we brainstormed that together. Uh, Lindner Dixville office in NPR, Florida. Can I purchase paint and brushes directly from them? Yes, MJ, you sure can. I think that they do. They have, uh, you can walk in. Yes, they have walk-ins. They, they sure are open to that. Right, Dixie Bell? Am I right? Okay, I'm opening my drawers, you guys, because I want to also prime, tap out the top of my drawers, just like this, just like I showed you that I did with the um, paint on the top. So that's it. So I think that's it, you guys. I, I hope that we, you know, it's not that often that we go over the basics, like paint and primer, but it has to be done every single time I work, every single time I do a project, I do this. So why not talk about it and, um, 
answer any questions that you have. Like those of you that want to do your bedroom suit. Hey guys, I want to do my bedroom suit too. I'm going to be honest. It looks just like these. My bedroom suit looks like this. It's, it's almost identical to these nightstands. Um, I've shared it on my blog. I've shared it, you know, on my Instagram and Facebook, what my, what my bedroom looks like. It's a beautiful, beautiful bedroom set, but I'm ready. I'm ready to have it lighter. It's very, very dark. Very, very dark. So that's it. I'm going to finish priming that and I'm going to put me a coat of dusty blue on this one. And then tomorrow I will be out here adding some, um, what's that other color I'm going to use? Stormy seas and some stormy seas kind of appropriate for the weather in the South right now. Um, what else was I going to tell you? Oh, thanks y'all for being patient about the crocodile nightstands. You guys have given them a lot of love. Uh, we did epoxies on epoxy tops and, um, uh, some of it needs to be redone, Matt feels like. So we haven't shared that yet. Hang in there. It'll be coming. Um, thank you so much, Dixie Bell, for having me. Thank you for the fantastic product and the support that you give to all of your retailers, the people that work for you, and your customers. You're an amazing company. Um, Tracy, thank you for being here. MJ, thank you for a good question. And uh, y'all have a wonderful Wednesday night. And I will see y'all next Wednesday. I'm going to head on over to my page at Tracy's Fancy. Maybe I'll see some of y'all over there. Okay, talk to you later. Bye.